Good evening, we're Group 21. I'm Alex Clark. I'm Nate Redding. I'm Kelsey Yuen. And this is the Ghana Affordable Housing Project. And now for the background of our project. It seemed obvious that in order to affect the most people, we should choose an area in the largest concentrated population. This led us to the capital city of Accra. An average dwelling in Accra is claimed by 4.6 people. Using this information, we would want each separate housing unit to be able to comfortably house the average family of five. Therefore, we would need to make each unit have two to three rooms in order to make the living conditions for families most comfortable. Each unit will have access to drinkable, pipe-borne water in the kitchen and bathroom. Even though it is more common for households in Ghana to access pipe-borne water from the outside of the house, water will be accessible within each housing unit because it is safer and infinitely more convenient. Furthermore, each housing unit will contain one toilet and one shower. With proper disposal of waste, we will keep the disease rate low and make living safe. We decided that our community will have a school to provide a good educational standpoint for the children living there and give them opportunities for the future, especially since the literacy rate in Ghana is lower than the international average. There would be a health center to lower disease rates, infant deaths, and hopefully educate the community about healthy living. The community would also have a soccer field, being one of the most popular sports in Ghana. For expected outcome, we expect to reduce the size of slums, and for low-income families, we will provide them with relief and education. And for the unemployed, we will provide them with marketable and desirable skills so they can find jobs outside of our community. And this will create a self-sustained system which will keep reducing slum, the size of slums and the unemployment. And this will serve as a model for the rest of the country on how to solve the problem of slums. Next, we have methods used. Our group decided to split our venture into three phases. Phase one begins here at the University of Illinois. We will organize the teams and resources we need before we even leave for Ghana. Once we get to Ghana, we will select 1,500 families from the slums to move to our community. And that's where we begin phase two. Phase two focuses on making our, our people in the community more marketable in the future. This will be done by giving them hands-on experience with construction, by building buildings in our community. Once they complete this phase, we will give them an education, making them even more marketable. Phase three then helps them find jobs outside of our community. Once they have found a job, we will move them out of our community and find a home for them somewhere in Ghana. Once they have moved out, we will move more people in, maximizing the people that we can help from the slums. To successfully complete this venture, we need local building materials, engineers and skilled architects to design the buildings for the community to live in. We need translators and teachers so we can work closely with the community and community volunteers in order to help educate and house and provide all the amenities required in our venture. And we also need substantial financial backing to fund this large scale project. I'll still be by to learn more about Ghana before we start our project. We could take a class to learn more about the language, culture, and the economy in Africa. Or we could study abroad. After speaking with Belinda Barnhart from the IPANG office, we learned about options for study abroad in Ghana, which would be highly recommended if we were to follow through with our venture. You can study abroad in Ligon, which is a suburb of Accra, through the study abroad office, or through the private organization CIEE. These trips are available during the fall and spring semesters for about $14,000, or for the entire academic year for as little as $26,000. In terms of getting to know the country, people, and the geographical location that our venture would take place, it would be easy once the on exchange, because Ghana is a relatively small country. Since Ligon is, in a, is a suburb of Accra, getting to know the capital city wouldn't be a problem. Alright, so next we have the SWOT analysis. There's a lot of strengths to our project. The first strength is the location. The climate is really good in Ghana, so we will be able to work year-round, making it really 
time efficient to make our community. Also, Ghana has set an example for a lot of other African countries as far as government goes, so it's a good place to start our venture since we plan to expand our project to other countries in need in the future. Another strength is we de decrease the number of people in slums. So this helps both people, we, both groups. We've got the group that's going to our community who's actually going to be moving out of the slums, but we've also got the people in the slums that are going to be staying there. And because we are moving people out, we will lower disease be that is caused by overcrowding as well as the, the lowering of uh, poor sanitation. Next, we're going to provide members of our community with opportunities in the future. Due to the three-phase process, we will be able to maximize the people we can help. Next, we've got the weaknesses. Weaknesses, it's going to be hard to get money and sustain it. So that's going to be a real sticking point for our project. As well as, we won't be able to help everybody at right away, so this will cause resentment. Next we have opportunities. Our first opportunity is to interact with a new culture. Furthermore, we will learn about how to approach ventures in the future. And finally, we've got the threats to our project. The citizens might not accept our help, and if we don't embrace their culture, the project will fail.